Hey, uh, I'm Kahi filling in for Ben here, uh, probably for an indefinite position. <laughs> With me is today's guest, Air of the Chronicler. Uh, you might know Air was predominantly from his mask making ventures. He is probably one of the best custom mask makers I have ever seen. And even though Bionicle fan base is kind of a bit on the small side now, still stands that way. So yes. you know, we're all glad to have him. And we're all interested to, you know, learn more about him, what he does. So nice to have you here. Yes. Thank you. I, I appreciate being here, and I'm I'm glad that I found you guys' podcast. Yes. All right. So uh, I guess we, should, you know, start off with the usual. How did you find out about Bionicle? How did you get into that? Um, I got a subscription. I forget how long it was. Back in the '90s, I had a subscription to the Lego Mania magazine, and the back Lego when Mania, it was yeah, that's old. I mean, yeah, that's man. Old. That, that's really old. When you had the Lego Maniac uh, drawn yeah. into the picture of the sets. You had yeah. like Zach, the Lego Maniac, and you had Johnny Funder. Man, I remember that. All right. Yeah. Um, so I, th- I think I started getting that in 2009. and uh, Or not 2000, 1999. And uh, so ba- basically I remember the first image, promotional image of Bionicle in the Mania magazine was Anua carving out a tunnel. And I'm like, this is cool. And uh, I was actually up at the uh, – I was away from home. Uh, I was out camping, and uh, uh, I think my mom came up uh, after I had already – you know, my dad and I had already gotten up there. And she brought the Mania magazine, and it had uh, the first Bionicle comic in it. Mm-hmm. And I just sat in my tent with a flashlight until like 4 a.m. reading and rereading it, and I, I, I was hooked. That is probably the best Bionicle story I've ever. Everyone else is just like, oh, I saw it on TV, or you know, I saw it in the store. That's actually a really my, great my, story. My Bionicle story of how I got into Bionicle is the best. I went to McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <to> McDonald's. That's <laughs> the, the rest is history. Like I, I, I was just so infatuated with it that I had my sculpting clay with me, and I tried to sculpt the sets for myself based off the artwork. So they, I just remember I sculpted like giant barrel knees because that's the way they were drawn in the first comic yeah. wow. and i tried so, to make Kopeka's that... sword out of straws so <laughs> i guess that's how that's i guess that's how i got started in customizing was cutting two straws down to make Kopeka's sword <laughs> well, but, we'll get uh, on to that. i just want to interject real quick as a sort of testament i i like i love making people feel old when you first started getting that lego media magazine i was about four years old and uh wonderful yeah, Meso, like Meso, you'd be like what, two years old, at that point. <laughs> I don't know how old you are, Meso. Ripper snappers back in my day. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of a big frame of reference. So okay, so now of course you know we all know you for doing your um your, your sculpting and you know your custom masks. What? I guess, like, did you take a class into getting that and sort of apply that to Bionicle, or did you start doing that as a hobby yourself? How did you get started with that? Um, my family, uh, we are all hobbyists here. My dad has been a hobbyist, I guess, since he was my age, and he's almost 70 now. Um, so I grew up around hobbies. Uh, my dad and my brother, they... They were both tabletop war gamers, and they built scale models. So I had, we have a massive workbench. There's actually a picture of it on my website with just tons of tools. And you know, I was always around them, uh, you know, when they were working on stuff. And I, I remember, I guess, when uh, I was about as old as you know, uh, you were uh, when I first got the Mania magazine. Um, my brother was building a helicopter, and he really hated me because I kept breaking the blades off of it but anyway (laughs) so I I was always around it I had been I'd gotten into uh, Games Workshop uh, Warhammer 40k the tabletop game so I had been building some models of my own and learning to paint and everything and uh, I guess the way I really got into it was um, when at the end of 2001 when they did the gold masks and then Lego released bronze masks, and I'm like, these aren't gold, they're bronze. <laughs> so I, I, I was angry, and I repainted, I, I, I asked my brother, you know, how he would do it, and so I sanded them down, and I repainted them with gold spray paint, and I even 
very carefully masked out the masked out the visor on uh, Gali's uh, mask because I didn't like how the bronze ones, you know, it was completely yeah. Uh, yeah. covered over. And so that that was how you know my first custom. It was fairly crude, but it, it held up surprisingly well. But it, it was literally Lego didn't make a good enough product. I want better, and I made it. No. So you're you're the type of person, uh, unlike like the majority of people in Weezy Power, instead of complaining about something, you actually go and change it. That's that that's is nice. very true. That's I wish true. I wish I was more like that. I wish a lot of people were more like that. But. Back, I think uh, I mentioned uh, a little while ago, probably before we started recording, when Greg told me that they wouldn't make a set in tan and black, and they did the yeah. very next next year. <laughs> that was when I had. That was when we saw the first set pictures for the uh, Mystica and the Fantaka and all. The Mystica. And oh. yeah, the Mystica. Fantaka. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, watch you, it. <laughs> um, but, but uh. So, but I had composed, I spent like two days composing this elaborate thread on how they could have made sets that, you know, fit all Greg's marketing criteria and fit the appearance of the original uh, Toa Nuva and everything. And I, I posted up this, like, every way I could think of, this is how they could have done it. And I literally had one kid um, post... If you truly loved Bionicle, you would not care how it looked. Really? Oh man, oh, I I hate um, I hate that. I'm I like, do that. I don't have limitless money. I'm not gonna spend it on things I don't like. So, <laughs> it's I mean like it's a toy line. It's not your girlfriend, right? Uh, what, <laughs> Pretty what's much. Really? <laughs> Pretty much. You expect them to look good. anyhow. No, I'm talking about the toy line. Those, I don't <laughs> want this to be I don't want this to be used against me and like you know. <laughs> Several uh, years later down the line. It's too late for that. It's yeah. too late for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sweet. But um yeah, so I guess well actually I kinda skipped a bit here. With VZ Power, how did you find that? And uh did you get like the mask was anything in VZ Power like inspire you to do the like mask thing? Uh you know, to start doing a lot more custom mask stuff or uh, well, I, I don't remember how I discovered BZ Power. I think I found it in, I guess it would have been 2003. Um, wow, that was a long time ago. So I'm like an eight-year member now, something like that. I don't know. Um, oh. I, I just got involved with the community, and I liked it. I think it was in 2006 or seven. i I'm not sure which. Because um, back when I did those gold masks a couple years well, actually, no, I'm thinking about it now. I had painted up an extra uh, Tahu mask as an infected one because I never got the Muaka and Kane Ra set, so I'm like, I want one of those. So I painted one up, and it was terrible. And uh, uh, in 06, I think it was, I was looking at it in my collection. I'm like, you know, I'm really not happy with this. And what, what we have out... Uh, my brother, he restores vintage automobiles by trade, and uh, he's a professional at it. And we have what's called an industrial sandblaster that's meant for removing rust off steel. And I'm like, I wonder if I can get the rusted pitted texture by putting the plastic mask through the sandblaster. So I did that, and it worked. And I had become a better painter by then, and I painted up to be all rusted, infected, and nasty. I'm like, this looks cool, and I put it up on BZP. And... Um, so I, I just posted it so people could see it, and next thing I know, I have like three or four people being like, "Can you make me one? Can you make me one? How much would you charge?" And I'm like, "Okay." So I started doing them for other people, and then I figured, you know, I could do other stuff, and it just sort of branched out from there. Hmm. Wow. So, uh, so you started like like a sort of business thing, I guess, with that. I mean, that was kind of before my time, and before I had money. <laughs> I didn't really know about that. Uh, kinda. I mean, uh, some people had been coming to me and asking me, and I, I just was kind of like, you know, I, I can, I can provide a service here and make myself some money. You know, thumbs up to that. Uh, and I did go through and opened a proper shop. I started a topic in buy sell trade, and I remember the mods getting angry at me because I already had another topic open, and you can't have two topics 
in the BST at the same char- uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got this, this, like, message demanding that I tell them which one to close. Anyway, um, no, close the thread I just posted. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop uh, complaining. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I did go through and I opened a proper store topic and it was about a million miles long. The And I, I ended up taking what was in that post and spreading it across my website a couple years later. So, so anyway. Um, yeah. Well, uh, let's see. So, like, with the whole, you know, customizing masks, doing all of that, were there any other people that did that alongside you? Or, like, were there any other, you know, um, customizer? I, well, know? I'm trying to think of, uh, before me there was Flintsmith. I don't know if that name rings a bell. It probably wouldn't. Oh, yeah. You, you remember Flint Smith? Yes. Yeah. He, uh... I mean, he he cast stuff. He he did castings of masks, but he was pretty well gone by the time I started up mine, and I don't think he ever reappeared. Um, I, I did have some. I had a number of people who were inspired by me, and they. I, I did have a few people attempt to open up in competition, and. I feel kind of conceited saying this, but basically they weren't as good as me. And that that's not because, you know, I'm not trying to say, well, I'm, you know, I'm cool. <laughs> uh, they, they couldn't compare to me. No, I, it's just that, you know, I grew up in a family, you know, we, that I grew up in a very hobby centric family and, you know, I've been around this stuff all my life and I, you know, learned how to do pretty much all this stuff, uh, second nature. And, you know, these kids, they see me, they get some, you know, supplies at the local Hobby Lobby or something, you know, Walmart, paint, you know, finger paint section, and they try to <laughs> do something. Um, th there is actually a section on my website with tutorials, that because people kept asking me these things, so I'm like, you know, yeah. I'll just put up tutorials, if people like that, you know, so that's cool. I actually, I had one kid, he actually copy and pasted my entire store post and changed the topic title and really? opened it as his own shop. And I was like, <laughs> uh, mods, can you close them down? And then the mods went after someone else instead of me for once, which was nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as of right now, um, I have found a couple of other people uh, on... DeviantArt, who are pretty good at what they do, that they've, yeah. that they're, there's at least one guy who's probably about my equal, he's done some really cool stuff, so I think now there's some folks out there, but in, back in BZP's heyday, uh, and back when I was going strong with the store, I did have, to answer your question, I did have some people, but they weren't as good as I was, and they, they didn't yeah. stick around. Okay. Well, so, uh, Anyone who knows me knows that I'm very centric about money and pricing and profit. How much would you make off, you know, uh, a mask? Like, how much would it cost to make, and how much profit would you get when you charge someone to? Um, do that? I always tried to be very fair about my pricing. Um, and uh, as some people have observed who have looked at my pricing, they would not agree with that. But um, I. I certainly do not try to gouge I do not try to uh, you know I don't try to see if you know if I can get as much money out of every single thing as I can like uh, Lego does with its sets but anyway <laughs> um, uh, yeah. so basically the way I price is I figure how long something is going to take me how much effort it's going to be and I I quote the price from there because like repainting a mask, you would think, well, what, you just spray some paint on it. But I, I take the mask, I sand it down with a fine grit sandpaper so that it doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't scratch, but at the same time it, you, it paint will hold, hold to it. And then I have to often blend colors to try to match the, uh, the Lego color as closely as I can. And I have to put that in the airbrush and then I have to spray it. 
and I have to clear coat it, and you know, and that's just a basic repaint, and that's going to take me over an hour of effort just to, uh, you know, yeah. from start to finish. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I I try to be fair with the prices, I really do, but I do have to cover, you know, the time it's going to take me. Yeah. Now, like, if, if I'm correct, you don't still do that, right? Um, your busy power heyday has been over. Or, or do you? Because I, I'm pretty uh, sure we've heard by now if you still did, but I, I, I'm not that active myself. Right, very quickly, there's a lot of static coming from your mic, Kahi. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm sorry. What, 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 let, me, let me see if I can deal with it. Give me one second. Yeah. Is that any better? Nope. No, I can hear. Still no. hear. Nope, okay. it just got <laughs> to be about the same. All right, uh, give me a second. Uh, good grief! Why does this always happen? Uh, where were we? Uh, I just asked you about let's see, busy powered modeling, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I, I asked you like if you're still doing that. If uh, right. you're still like, are you still you know open for commissions or you know doing that sort of thing anymore? Have you moved on? Yeah. What's up that, with you now? That is a uh, kind of a tough subject in that uh, back in 2009, I, uh, I I had been going pretty strong with the store. Um, back in 2009, I allowed you know some real life issues, some stress and stuff to uh, to knock me down, and I. Uh, I let things drop. I let myself fall behind. I ended up with orders that I was, you know, months behind on. People that I kept having to apologize to. And since then, I mean, I've tried to make several comebacks, um, like big, full, hey, I'm back, I'm in business. You know, I'm, I'm not going to drop the ball again. Comebacks, and then I drop the ball. Um, uh, and I, I'm not proud of that at all. I'm very unhappy with myself over that. And I, I mean, a big reason of that is that I feel that I, you know, kind of missed the closing, the closing days of Bionicle and the old BZP. And you know, I, I can't go back in time and uh, do that over. Um, I do still accept commissions. I would like to try to build my shop back to. Uh, something of its previous state i would like to take on hero factory and uh, see what i can do with uh with that i actually changed the name from the commas masks uh forge and foundry to vols forge and foundry and uh, uh the point of that was that i was going to make up a toa character named vol who you know is a smith craftsman and a hero factory character named vol who's also a smith smith craftsman because after I'd been in business for a while, I actually ended up branching out into, like, swords and armor and all kinds of crazy crap. So it wasn't yeah. just masks. But regardless, I mean, I, I have still been taking uh, commissions. Like, if uh, someone sends me an email or someone, uh, you know, someone... I have a number of friends from back in the days who contact me. I don't know. are like, hey, can you do something for me? So I do still do commissions on an individual basis, and I would like to build it back to a full business. That. That's great. Uh, uh, I've so, got a commission. Hmm. I'll pay okay. you a lot of monies if you if <laughs> I'll send you all the parts if you can make okay. me a statue of me, right. uh, like a real a buff statue of me, like stabbing <laughs> Kahi who's lying on the ground, very weak and frail. I'm just stabbing him through the throat with a sword. A sword. <laughs> Anyhow. And uh, so do we put Messinac in as this, like, small, sad little hero factory set looking on? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And <laughs> both of them. That, that sounds pretty fair. Here, I've, I've, I've already drawn a commission of dead Bionicles, so it, mm-hmm. it's really nothing new to me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I put the link in the Skype thing. Huh. That's actually pretty awesome. All right, it looks yeah. like... Uh, awesome. What's his name? Red Kongu. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Red Kongu. The, name is, the name's on the tip of my tongue. Axon You're and Red Kongu. <laughs> gray, gray and Axonac. Are you thinking, uh, Alsar? Yeah, him, that's... Yeah. 
Yeah, he, of course. He commissioned. Yeah, his name's in the URL, of course. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. But yeah, yeah, it's like BZP isn't that. Oh, I'm out. Sorry. Like we we can talk about for a long time how BZP has fallen from its former grace. Yeah. Oh. They're not that far gone. To where, if, if you were, say, able to get a, a shop back up and running, I think, personally, it would do wonders mm. for the community just having that available again. Because yeah, there and, have and been people who have, like, posted topics about custom masks and custom parts, but it's, like, you know, nothing near as professional as what you did. Not nearly as high of a, you know, work quality. So it's a bit more difficult for people to go to such a place and be like, okay, yeah, you know, this could work. Well, um, I was going to ask two questions, but then I remember how I found out about you in the first place, and that was for uh, Rags, um, oh, how do you say, Olisini, oh, oh, Olisi, Olisi, that that is the one of best. Yeah, (laughs) that is that is like that's the Mona Lisa of custom Bionicle masks. (laughs) Thank you. And. I was going to ask, you know, what's the most expensive one you've done and which one took the most time, but I, I'm pretty sure that would be it, if I'm um, not mistaken. That That is certainly it. Um, I do have another one that's a statue uh, that was featured on the BCP front page, so you probably saw it. That would be... Yeah, I remember that. That would be oh, yeah, equal in time yeah, and effort. I that would be equal to it in time and effort, but it didn't require the sheer amount of just how in the hell am I going to do this that uh, the yeah. OEC required? How much... It, it, I don't know if you can divulge this information, but I'm, I'm, I'm always curious about this. How much did Rig pay for that? <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember, actually, because he traded me some stuff, and I think it was like... Uh, it was over $50 plus trade items, but I forget what. It was something okay, around. Well, it, it, it was, it was expensive. That was probably... So, so, like, what was what was the most challenging thing? Of course, like, you know, the design process, you know, like, how I'm going to do this. But, like, how did how did you sort of settle up on, you know, like, how you're going to just create this mask from scratch that you only had a picture of? Um, I, honestly, I don't really have a problem with that process. I just sort of go to town. Um, uh, when I was first looking at how I would go about it, I... I had him send me a Congo uh, Anika mask, and that's what it's based on. And I just started building it up from there. Um, the stitches that are holding the front of it together, that's actually chunks of solder with the ends crushed down. Um, so, I, I mean, we have a big enough supply of stuff here that, you know, anything like that that I need, I can find something that does the job and, and do it. Uh, but yeah, literally. I mean, I, I looked. I looked at. Um, I looked at the image, and I, you know, just making a two D image into a three D thing like this was certainly a challenge. Um, and and I'm not entirely happy with it. But like I said, I don't really have a problem. I look at it, and I just sort of see how this would, you know, look in three dimensions, and I just run from there. So I guess wait, when you create a custom mask, just say that you know if someone wanted to create one of the uh, custom masks from uh, like the, the two, like you know all the unknown quote unquote masks that uh, Sager did, Stuart Sager. They, oh, I'm Bionicle, Bionicle World. Bionicle, that Bionicle World too. Don't forget about that. Yeah. Um, so how would I just say, like how would you like propose you know I guess like how would you start doing that? How would you tell someone you know sell this step one in that process? Um, I have step one would be to find an existing mask that's similar, and then uh, I'd cut it, you know, cut cut it down as far as I needed it to, and then build it up again with a uh, plastic card or um or whatever else really. <clears throat> okay, so I'm well, okay. I guess you get into that, you know, after you're saying what. Are the like the indisposable tools of the trade that you would need to you know start doing anything like that? Um, well, an example I'm going to use is uh, uh, this fellow wanted uh, a Spartan mask from the movie 300. Uh, 
a Spartan helmet over top of a Tahu mask. And I, I'm staring at this thing like, how am I going to do this? The first one I did, I actually sculpted entirely from what's called green stuff putty. It's a two-part epoxy that you mix together, and then you shape it, and then it hardens. And that was a huge pain because while it was soft, it kept flopping everywhere. It just it wasn't pretty. Um, and it was very hard to get an equal, an even shape, and it, it was a huge pain. But, you know, I looked at how I'm going to do this, and then I figured, well, I can do this with the putty. It'll work out, and I, I went from there. Um, he was not happy because I hadn't put a horsehair crest on it, so he refused me, to, refused to pay me for that one, and asked me to do another, which I did. Hmm. Uh, the other one I used a very thin plastic card for the the face facial helmet part, um, and uh, I can toss you a link here so you know what I'm talking about, uh, and. I put the horsehair crest on it, but for some reason I did not use plastic card for that, so it came out obscenely thick and just wasn't really in keeping with the rest of it. So basically, right there, you know, I learned from the previous one, I improved the technique for the facial part, but I hadn't, you know, done a crest like that before, so that part, it, it, it was. Uh, you know, I learn more with each one that I do, and that one, it came out okay, but it, it looks kind of clunky. <laughs> But again, I, I literally I just look at. I, I'm not even sure how to describe it. I just sort of consider literally, what what materials can I use for this, and what steps would it take to build it, and then I just run from there. And a lot of what I do is literally winging it. <laughs> okay, so I notice like a lot of sometimes a lot of stuff you do has sort of, uh, like you know, recars and mask. You sometimes paint them to have a sort of more rustic kind of feel or look to them how do you say like how, how do you go about doing that uh do you mean like with paint chips and uh wear and tear and things like that yes or, yeah uh that is as i think i mentioned earlier i do tabletop wargaming so i paint fine scale figures and that that's my real hobby and uh Basically, I just transpose techniques from that onto the masks in that, uh, for example, I have a, uh, I called it resurfacing, but uh, I have a Tahu Nuva mask that I did complete with the little poison scar on the left cheek from uh, the first movie. Um, I sanded it down, I repainted it a dark red, and then using a bristle brush, I built up all the raised areas to give it the uh, a realistic highlighting um i used a wash to darken it and and again like i said i learned on e each mask the first one i did i used an ink to uh provide the shadowing and that came out glossy which wasn't that cool um i did a second one that came out much better but uh for the chipping areas i mean i look at what uh I look at what surfaces would naturally chip, and the way I do that is I actually put a black, a splotch of black on, and then I paint silver into the middle of the black splotch. Because if you just put silver on there straight, it won't look right, but with the little black area around the chip, for some reason it looks right. And that's just a technique that I know from, you know, my figure painting. So I'm, I'm carrying over uh, knowledge from you know, my other hobbies into, uh, into this. Sure. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, I guess, what was the other thing you were going to say before I interrupted you? I, I, would... I... <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> God, he okay. tends to do that. Yes. Uh, yes, I, I, I do that a lot. Well, okay, so, uh, let's see. Now, the never kind I uh, was sort of working out as you know, that the picture you gave us with the Spartan helmet, you know how like mm -hmm. Tahu sort of has a darker sort of paint thing. Yeah, sorry, it's hard to it's hard to describe. It's right. he has like you know like uh, sort of like less like you know chipped and more like rust appearing along his edge. The yeah, edge that, that's his, that that's the the paint chipping I was referring to. Um, okay, all right. And the effect I got for that. So I, I, I started with uh, here. I'll send another picture that shows it better. I started with a dark red, and then on all the raised areas, I built that up uh, with careful, 
uh, you know, freehand brushing, I built up the highlighting with that. And then as a final step, I put in all the paint chipping. And I tried to be very careful right. to limit it just to where paint might chip. Because a, a yeah. lot... In trying to make something look realistic, if you do it right, nobody will notice. But if you do it wrong, it's, you know, glaringly obvious. So Yeah. And that's just the sort of little thing that make, makes a lot of what I do look right, as opposed to, you know, when someone else tries it, that they don't, and through no fault of their, their own, but they just don't really have a solid grasp, and it, it comes out wrong. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, we, have, we have more segments to do, so I'll start wrapping this up. But, um, yeah, uh, I guess... One of the two last questions I'm going to ask, if you could go back to when you first started doing this or, you know, while you're doing it or, you know, I guess during your career, quote unquote, busy power, and you could give yourself one piece of advice, what would that be? Hmm. Um, I guess my piece of advice would be to uh, better manage my time so that I wouldn't end up... Uh, dropping out of the community the way I did, which I, it's something that I feel very badly about. Uh, I, I really wish I had made a more dedicated effort to, uh, you know, stay in the community and get the work done and, you know, stay out there. And uh, I guess, I guess that's what I'd tell myself. Well, it's never too late to return. I hope not. Yes. No, actually, oh. it's interesting because you came back at the bloody perfect time. Bionicle community <laughs> sucks right now, and you're just what they need. Yeah. <laughs> but not what um, deserve. Yeah, if... I'd like to just float something real quick, and I'll try not to take up too much time with it. Sure. Um, something, something I had been considering back a few years ago... After I posted that thread about, you know, how the Toa Mystica and everything could have been, I got to thinking, I'm like, I wonder if I could make up conversion kits with just, like, a select few custom parts, and then other people could use their own collections to build, you know, the the custom mm -hmm. set that I have in mind. So, for example, yeah. to make Toa Nuva that look like they do in the movies, you know, where Lua doesn't have buck teeth and Golly doesn't have a pig snout. <laughs> Lua, another first. Lua, <laughs> I know. Us, that, one I'm going to do I'm gonna interject one here. One of us. That's been a long, heated subject of debate. No. Uh, Lua versus Lewa versus Lewa. And that, that's going to continue until the end of time. Uh, and, and all but. we got out of that was me asking, is it Lua or Lua? And no one ever let me live that down. <laughs> All right. I just say Lua. Okay. In, in Lua, my yes. in my defense, instead of saying Anawa for uh, the Toa Toa Metro of Stone, I say Wanwa. So, <laughs> and it's totally wrong, but I do it anyway. Yeah. No, I mean, you can't really go wrong with Anawa and Onua. Like, I don't know what they're thinking of there, making it I, I, that's so me. so close together. Yeah. Okay. So this this piece you've posted, this is. This is what Marcus need. No more, no, no, no more Roxy heads. You know. No, they don't <laughs> need this. <laughs> <laughs> this is little this children is this. are gonna look on and go, what the? <laughs> this is the single most. Little children have moms, LJ. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, this yeah. is the single most controversial custom I've ever done for obvious reasons, and I'm gonna leave it at yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to, uh, if you want to tag in the description a link to this that just says aforementioned, uh, you know, controversial custom, uh, I just leave it at that. Yes. Because, yes, I had someone come to me and ask me to do this for them. And no making way. those two things was far more difficult than it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got to, uh, I'm on the website right now. I love the layout, by the way. I've got to Thank figure you. out who ordered this. <laughs> um, Erebus Nuva. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you know, a part of me is not surprised. I'm just going to leave it at that. The last question, uh, you know, what do you have to say to the community of BZ Power, and especially those who would like to get into your craft? Um, 
Hmm. Don't well, do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... To BZ Power, I mean... I would certainly like to get my stuff back out to the community and, you know, see if we can get some interest drummed up again. And I'm, I'm glad you guys are, you know, as enthusiastic about that concept as you are. Yeah. Um, for anyone else looking to get into it, unless this is something that, I mean, you want, you think you would enjoy, you know, doing and intend on doing lots of them. I mean, I've had people ask me, how do I make an infected mask? I'm like, well, um, you start out, you buy an $800, uh, you know, sandblaster, and then you buy $20 worth of paints and, uh... Dollars worth of brushes, and or you can pay me eight dollars and I'll do it for you. So, <laughs> yeah. if, if it's if it's a genuine interest, you know, if it's something that you're really interested in, because there are a lot of people who customize action figures, and I have a lot of respect for them. Um, I think it, it's a good entry point, you know, messing around with these and then maybe going on to more advanced figures and things like that. But if you literally just have one or two things in mind and uh, and you have no previous experience, you didn't grow up around hobbies like I had the fortune to and things like that, you, you're you going to spend money and you're not going to get the result you want, and that's just going to be that. And I don't mean that in a mean way, that's just fact. Yeah. No, no that that's perfectly understandable. If you want something like that, you know, it's better to get it professionally done than the – you could do it yourself if you only want, you know, one or two things done, it's probably not going to be worth buying $100 of equipment for like an $8 mask. Yeah, it's... Because it, even simple things like uh, Toa Ausar uh, asked me to make a symmetrical uh, Nuju mask, and yeah. that was actually almost as difficult as the Halisi, trying to get that perfectly symmetrical and look right. So you, even what you might think is simple is actually very difficult. Okay. Well, um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, thanks for turning in to uh, talk to V. Kahi. Um, <laughs> v. Silent oh, Kahi. Yeah, yeah, the only thing, it, you you know, you left out Ven's signature question. Mm-hmm. What? What? Ven's signature question is, so, insert guest name here, what are you going to do next? Yeah. Ah, I like that question. Uh, yeah. Well... Uh, well, I, what I would like to do next is reopen my store, expand it to, uh, Hero Factory and any system stuff that I can get, um, uh, and do what I can to, you know, revive the community in whatever way I can, and then that's, that's what I'm hoping for, and I'm kind of, you know, counting on you guys to keep me accountable so that I don't uh, drift off and leave everything hanging again. You can count on us. We're reliable. Indeed. Sometimes. We're, we're yeah. totally reliable. We, we get, get our one. movies out on the release date. We pro... Uh, nah, nah. Oh, watch it, Palo. <laughs> this, this time around, okay. it's hanging on your shoulders. You better get to work on that CGI, this, don't you? <laughs> this is a personal question from me. How hard would it be to make, like, a calyx that, like, attaches to a normal head? <laughs> is, is that possible? Is that like? Can um, you do that? Like a custom calyx deal? Um, like I'm, I'm, I, I, I have money. I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> you have a job? Sweet. I don't. I'll take your money. <laughs> um, well, see, now you have a job oh, too. Oh well, you make a calyx that fits the head in return. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's possible. It would be difficult because the rubber that they used yeah. nothing sticks to and it flexes so anything you do get to stick to it will break off of it okay so could, I, I could make you one that would work if you stuck it on a head and then never took it back off the head and never actually touched the head again <laughs> huh. so it's just that there have uh, been a number uh, of cu- fair enough there, there's been a number of stuff that I've done and I've had to tell them like be super delicate with this because there was just no way for me to make it stronger. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I'll be taking that into consideration if you ever open up your shop again. I, hey, I I'm, I'm, take, I'm taking individual orders. I'm just saying. All right. 
Yeah. Even, even right. if it's not open, I'll take individual orders. I'll be sending you a personal One, message later on in Skype. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Thank you very I, much I for having me on. Man. <laughs> yes, uh, Thank- we, we still have. Oh, yeah, you have to go. Um, I'm just gonna log out for a few minutes. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me on, and I really enjoyed it. And you guys actually asked some really cool questions, so I'm yeah. I'm glad I could be here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you yeah. for being here, and uh, you know, I listening hope, to our podcast. Hope, yeah. not gonna come <laughs> hope yeah. you have me Thanks back. Thanks for being here. Thanks for contributing yeah. to the podcast. Uh-huh. Uh, an awesome guest, an awesome person, yes. an awesome member of the community. Yes. Well, so if people guys. do want to contact you. Sorry, the one last thing. Yeah. People do want to contact you, ask for commissions, or you know, just check out the stuff you have. What's the best way to do that? Where should they check you out? Um, I mean, everything except for some of the more recent stuff I've done. Everything is up on the website. Um, and just send me an email at airthechronicler@gmail.com, and you're good to go. Okay. What's your website URL? Why don't we just um, add the description? Yeah, put it in the description because it's oh, yeah, actually really long. Yeah, yeah, right. that would be a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks for being on here. Yeah. Great uh-huh. having you. Thanks for having me. Hope hope you have me back. I'd like to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to, as he says wistfully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs>